Russian President Vladimir Putin's biggest critic, Alexei Navalny, is dead. But it seems like his mission is not. Navalny's wife, Yulia Navalny, is pledging to finish what he started. A woman who has always been by Navalny's side, whether the Putin critic was at political demonstrations or court hearings, Yulia Navalny would be there, often holding his hand. For more than two decades, in fact, Navalny shunned any open political role for herself. She said that her purpose in life was to support her husband and to protect their two children. What Alexei Navalny had been doing was brave, but what Yulia Navalny has endured is even more compelling. After years of evading Russian authorities, surviving multiple arrests and even a poisoning, her husband succumbed to death in a Russian prison. Just three days later, Yulia Navalny faced the camera and announced she is taking up her husband's cause. Here's what she said. Three days ago, Vladimir Putin killed my husband, Alexei Navalny. Putin killed my children's father. Putin took away the most precious thing I ever had, the closest and most loved man. By killing Alexei, Putin killed half of me, half of my heart and half of my soul. But I still have the other half, and it tells me that I have no right to give up. It's painful to watch. Yulia's grief is still so raw and her love too strong. She has called for Russians to share her rage. Will she be the new leader of Russia's opposition? Is she President Putin's new enemy? Let's just take a look at her story. She was born in Moscow as Yulia Abusimova. The year was 1976. Her father was a government scientist and her mother worked at Gosplan, the Soviet Central Economic Planning Agency. When Yulia was only in middle school, her parents went through a divorce. Her mother went on to marry a Gosplan colleague. They made an average Soviet family living in a sea of uh, high-rise apartment buildings, high-rise apartment buildings in Moscow's Olympic Village. Inspired by her parents' conversation at home, Yulia majored in international economics. The bright young lady knew all the government ministers by name. Years went by. It was the summer of 1998. Yulia met a young lawyer at a resort in Turkey. His name, Alexei Navalny. As Yulia has previously recollected, there was instant chemistry. Navalny, in fact, immediately felt that Yulia would be his wife. And two years later, Navalny's wish came true. When their first child, Dasha, was born in 2001, Yulia stopped working and became a stay-at-home mom. In the year 2008, she had a son, Zakhar. They were both very difficult pregnancies, so the couple decided not to have any more children. For years, Navalny focused on raising their two children. Meanwhile, her husband published investigations of fraud in the Russian government and state-owned companies. When he would get arrested or attacked, Yulia would work hard to maintain a sense of normalcy for their children. She took the reins of the home as Navalny was out navigating the political space. But don't let this deceive you. Yulia read everything that Navalny published. He would consult his wife, in fact, before making decisions, discuss his ideas with her. When he would be in jail, Yulia would take to his blog and social media accounts to keep his supporters posted. She was his editor, his sounding board. In public eye, Navalny appeared to be working alone, but behind the scenes, the husband and wife worked as a unit. It was August 2020. Navalny was supposed to fly to Moscow from Siberia, but the flight had made an emergency landing in Omsk because the Putin cr critic had collapsed after being given a near-fatal dose of the nerve agent Novichok. So here was Yulia striding through the battered, gloomy hallways of a provincial Russian hospital, looking for the room where her husband lay in a coma. But she was blocked by menacing policemen from moving around the hospital. So she turned to a cell phone camera held by one of Navalny's aides and pushed for clearance to fly her husband abroad for life-saving treatment. 
she was able to save her husband then. When Navalny finally woke up from his coma, he would recount how a kind and cheerful feminine presence pierced the veil of his hallucinations and pulled him from the other side. But now, he is gone forever. So Yulia has again turned to a camera and called for support to avenge her husband's death. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.